Now as you pause and get comfortable to dream about your next holiday, you could make a list of things to take away with you and make sure the car is serviced and fueled up, ready to take you away somewhere useful. You are hopefully on your car's list of things to take. And as you continue to do that and think about that, perhaps you can pay partial attention to the letting go of the tension. Something you may have been holding in your fingertips and the slowing and easing of your heart rate and blood pressure and breathing. You can be in charge of your breathing when you take a deep breath or two and feel that pleasant feeling you can feel when you hold it in your lungs for just a moment and then let go. Trust your body to know what to do and go from being in control into a transformation to being in charge. Don't be tense about having no anxiety. Not getting stressed. A feeling you don't have. And you do have a feeling of calm. A sweet feeling. And as you continue to make a list to help, you could make a throwaway list of things that you would be comfortable letting go from your list. Or you could just make a list to savor of what you see when you see yourself doing all those things that you really want to do. And ignore those things you wouldn't mind letting go on a very relaxing holiday when you go into the entrance of a place empty of the things that you've had enough of. Let go and you can climb a new mountain and say, I can do it, and you will. Or you can climb an old mountain and say, I did it, and you did. Have you noticed that some people don't want to let go? You could call them accumulators. Like magpies, they collect things. Sometimes for emotional reasons that they can't explain intellectually. And maybe emotional baggage is really intellectual food waiting to be digested. And as you continue to focus on the sometimes cyclic and slowly disappearing tension in your fingertips, you may be curious, what does no tension feel like? If there is no tension, what does that feel like? And what does it feel like 
when you don't notice any tension? What does nothing feel like? And as you allow your tension to wander, what little there is of it through your body, like a searchlight, like a super microphone, searching for no tension, searching for comfort, searching for a need for nutrition, throughout your whole body, searching for what it feels like to feel right. Hold on to that and let go of what it feels like to feel wrong and fill your senses with what it feels like to feel right and hold on to that. Now you may be curious about whether at times, if you habitually adopt particular postures or positions or locations, you can influence how you feel and behave at many levels. Or if you let that habit go, you can influence how you feel and behave at many levels. And this time, you are in charge all the time. You can get into the bath. You can get out of the bath by yourself. By the way, you are in charge of and accept responsibility for when and how often you get in and out of the bath or shower. You are responsible. Is the heat enough? Are you clean enough? And out soon enough not to be a juicy prune and you could change the balance between showering and not showering and the level of cleanliness within an accepted range and get more out of life more or less clean Now you can wear your clean underpants in case you get hit by a bus. Because that's what your mum taught you and you trust her advice as you should. But I'm not sure how much extra protection you'd get or when, if the insured event happens, how clean they'd stay. But of course, mums are smart. And if you eat up all your veggies and healthy food and play lots of games, you will be ready for hiking and hunting when you're old enough to leave the cave and ready to jump out of the way of buses, leap over tall buildings. Maybe that's a survival instinct. Maybe not. And you can wonder, what if shit happens? Or you can wonder, what if something good happens? And you can wonder, if someone is looking at you, wondering how good you look. So good, but mostly they are not. They are not even looking outside of their own skin. 
Or you could look at someone and seldom take a second look, even though they may be edible. If some wolf higher up on the food chain thinks you look a bit tasty and offers you a sweet in a jar on an invisible chain, that sweet would give you enough energy to go a long way. But the opening of the jar is too small and you can't get your hand out. And the only way is to let go of what you simply can't have and find a better way to get the energy you need to get ready for that holiday. But what if something constantly reminds you you want that sweet so bad? Now if you haven't ever been in this position then you haven't been born yet. And if you have been, and still are, to survive, there is little doubt you will need to fight harder or smarter. You will need to have a strong mind in a strong body. At least strong enough to repel those who would eat you and smart enough to find the energy to go away and do better things. And a strong mind in a strong body and the strength of your thinking will be related to the strength of your doing, the strength of your body. And if a wiry, young, emerging elite athlete wants to go to the next level, generally he or she will eat and exercise to increase body muscle mass and strength. And there will be a change in thinking that comes with being stronger. You can do things you couldn't do before. And as a player, your options for more and better moves and maneuvers increase on the journey to allow change of your eating regime because when you do more things you need a stronger body and most of all more energy you need more energy your incredible body can take the equivalent of one or two eggs each day and convert that to strength and energy in your muscles to nurture you. And you can trust your genetics and your body to utilize and enjoy the precious gift of those eggs. You have millions of taste buds on your tongue and it's very important that you do not deny them the exquisite pleasure that they deserve and that they will share with you in return. The precious gift will be transformed into precious energy to extract the nutrients to make you strong enough and give you enough energy for enjoyable activities and create the most efficient and perfect body size, strength and shape for the specific exercises and maneuvers that you wouldn't mind doing more easily, more freely, more often, maybe every day. Go for a short walk or do something very enjoyable your body will adapt to achieve the perfect size, strength and shape. A beautiful balance that will look different. And you can feel so much more comfortable starting from the equivalent 
of these life-sustaining nutrients. Then you fill with insufficient nutrients to provide spark, vitality and appetite producing activities. Activities that for so many people are the whole point of being alive. Activities that leave no time for crying over spilt milk. For those who have missed out through lack of strength or energy. Activities that make you stronger and more energetic. And your body will change. Become stronger and more energetic and adapt to become lean and efficient. And if you don't like looking at beautiful art or look at it once a week and pay particular attention to the gradual improvement in your strength, your energy and how good you look, you can pay particular attention each day to how good you feel to be alive. And the journey to allow change of how you spend your energy and your energy producing activities to allow the building blocks of physical life into your body, to allow energy, to allow exercises that stimulate the creation of lean, efficient muscle fibers, to allow a growth in physical abilities and activities and allow confidence to let you go to more and more options, to allow better and better decisions, taking you closer to realizing your destination. And this can all happen very quickly, any time, or gradually on your journey like a symbolic move to a new destination, your perfect world, or a holiday where you get away and let go. Now if, as I expect you do, you live in a multiverse. You have many bodies. For example, two bodies. One filled with negativity. One with positivity. Which body do you prefer to be conscious of when you happen to be going in the right direction? Or not aware of the energy you use when you choose where not to go and where to go and you may be curious whether if you live in several bodies which one you want to live in as your primary place of residence so that you are in charge living in the body that is charged with helping you aspire Dream, live in your perfect world. Now that reminds me of a story of a ghost. Caspar is very sad. He has no body only an invisible one. And when he puts on a sheet and looks in the mirror, he doesn't like the shape. Everything is there, functionally and so on, but the shape isn't close enough to a super sleek design he saw on a clothes rack bodied model in a magazine once and a delicious model design he in fact is now infatuated with. He tries a thinner sheet but that doesn't help. 
Caspar is still very sad. He could be doing so many things. And Caspar has a second life. A second chance. The dress rehearsal is over. But little Caspar is spending too much time being self-aware of his body. And too little time actually using his body. Giving. Helping others. So his mother tells Caspar, You could do a mime act, walking into imaginary walls. And you can look into the mirror, into your own eyes, with conviction. Look deep for any sign of conviction looking back. Keep looking with all the conviction you can find in your heart. Mean it like you've never meant it before until you can see that conviction staring back at you with a steely resolve. And the eyes are the window to the soul. You can see all you need to see. And you can make a promise that you know you can keep. And there's time for you to be sad about the time you had, feeling bad. Or maybe you can use the same time to focus on the good things about those times. Separate the pain from the scar tissue and remember the lessons, the icing on the cake. And you can redefine all the pain in this context from what was a headline at the time to what now, on reflection, is simply a pain-free exclamation point with the purpose of keeping a close watch that mistakes are not repeated, automatically prevented from repeating. If life is a journey, we do not put it on pause while we take some time out to reflect on how much time we spent doing stuff which we wish we didn't, but we did. It's time to let go the pause button and enjoy the fruits of life. Now that reminds me of a story about one bloke who stayed at home and moped. And of course, he was still depressed. And a second bloke who read saucy magazines but still stayed home and moped. And a third bloke who took no dope from anyone and went out and had a blast. Once upon a time, there was a little boy. He was quite slim, and one day his mother found him crying and saying, I'm so skinny, I'm so skinny. Don't worry, said his mum. Thin people live longer and healthier lives. Only eat when you're hungry, and you can't go wrong. Sixty years later, the little boy was sixty-five years old and still slim and healthy. My mum was right, he thought to himself out loud as he sat in his office, fit and strong, with his healthy body covered and out of sight and out of mind 
in his smart clothes. That reminds me of a very talented rodeo rider who lost his nerve. And a good friend gave him his options. You can stop sulking in your jockey silks about all the races and celebration dinners you could have won. If you'd run. Or put on your shiny cowboy boots and take a ride in your horse and sulky, of which you are in charge. And if you had a prize-winning racehorse, where would you take it? And if you had the responsibility to keep it in tip-top shape, what and how much would you feed it to extend its run of wins? And if you were a tip-top jockey in charge of a prize-winning sentient being, easily making the weight 5 to 10 percent the mass of your horse, riding in the winning race with strength and skill and confidence, and there is no doubt how good you will look, both of you, willing your winning bodies over the finish line, and winners are grinners. Now sentient beings have an amazing tendency to create the environment and other conditions to bring the physical embodiment to homeostasis for optimum balance. And you may be interested to hear that very active animals like hummingbirds which eat approximately twice their body mass each day and drink about half their body mass in water and over days and weeks put on very little weight or mass other than a little muscle tone once full grown and hummingbirds prior to migration put on fat equal to half their body weight to give them the energy they need for their journey initially carrying a mass of around 28 grams in the case of the ruby-throated hummingbird around 1,000 to 2,000 times less mass than an adult human. Now the mass of blue whale has well over 1,000 times more mass than an adult human at between 80 and 130,000 kilograms and needs around 1,000 kilograms of plankton, around 1% of its body mass, and a similar amount of water each day to be healthy. And of course, you are what you eat. Stored energy waiting to be released, to be let go, returning to where it came from to our massive healthy planet to be used for something useful and of course human beings tend to be more sedentary than animals in the wild due to the more efficient food and energy producing techniques generally by others sometimes by us producing a smorgasbord of different nutritious foods with greatly varying calorie contents. And for a sedentary specimen, just to maintain existing body mass, needs an absolute minimum of 1,500 calories per day 
to provide enough energy for basic survival activities like eating, digestion and respiration and not much else or a daily energy intake of 1,800 through to 3,000 calories to provide enough energy for basic movement through to elite sport or heavy physical work which many people need to do just to survive and you must fuel up if you want your engine to perform or if you want to get out and do stuff get out of the house and do interesting things saving fuel is like saving energy what's the point it's all going back to the planet eventually anyway so why not take some with you it weighs very little spread so thin under the skin and you may or may not agree but most human beings agree looks peachy and gives a certain appeal to at least half the population if not most and if eating a little more will make you more attractive to others maybe that's not such a bad thing you could even add an almost imperceptible layer so that you can alternate between more attractive to even more attractive depending on how you look at it and you don't need to use all your attractiveness or energy continuously or up in one go you can do whatever you like now if you were to go for a basic model you need at least 1800 calories per day to run it remember that number 1800 calories and go to what's cooking America Net. you can see the calorie content of your food for example two boiled eggs 160 calories two slices of bread 80 calories one ounce of regular cream cheese 100 calories one teaspoon of butter 50 calories one teaspoon of jam 30 calories one cup of cornflakes 100 calories one cup of milk 60 calories one cafe latte 260 calories all adding up to 840 calories a good breakfast and a good start to almost half of a 1800 calorie day of action and good health and although some foods especially greens have too few calories to provide for the storage of energy they provide an important alkalizing function to balance the typical two acid western diet and a balanced body pH is required for good health so you can feel confident and your grateful body will make abundant energy available to you again right up to when you refuel it because it trusts you to refuel it right up to at least the size of your tank which you can expect will grow to accommodate your enthusiasm for a joyful and energetic lifestyle and just how much of life you would like to taste is up to you 
that's something you're in charge of. No one else. Just you. Hold the key to the fuel tank. The same key that opens up the door to the world. And the world is your oyster. And you can apologize to your body for any past indiscretions. Probably be told, forget it. And you can. Giving closure. And you can accept that. And feel comfortable in your own skin. And move on. Now discomfort, pain, are really just temporary words, like a loud shirt, to everybody else except the person or sentient being who can notice it, can notice that it has three symptoms beside itself. And as you focus on these three sub-symptoms and how they affect your attitude, your behavior, for one, you can notice three things. That what you are wearing is temporary. That can and will pass. For two, you can notice that you are in charge of what you wear and how often you look at it. And for three, you realize that there really is no hurry to change your shirt. And if dressing for success is what you need to achieve, if you want to feel relaxed, you can take your time selecting a peachy shirt that says what you want it to. And other sentient beings can notice your conversational clothing and it cannot hurt to now and again talk yourself into wearing your special shirt. You know the one that you love to wear to special occasions. You know that shirt that says, look at me. Because you look good in that shirt. If only you could look that good and feel that good all the time. If only you could get to talk to whoever it is that has the authority to make the decision on whether or not you deserve to be happy and relaxed, or give you permission to make a list of fun places to go, relaxing things to do, or you could give yourself permission to do whatever you want you can do whatever you want. You can stay home and enjoy talking about all the things you're proud of. And if you want to, you can give yourself official permission to participate in life. Go out on a quiet walk and enjoy nature. or go out and share life with someone and enjoy yourself before, during and after it's time to retire or make a bucket list. And whether you're a product of polite society or you're a bit more down to earth, 
The irony is, no one is exempt from vicious, malicious self-criticism. Even detention or physical punishment. A position not tolerated in an inclusive society or an inclusive school of thought. And you can re-educate yourself in the school of hard knocks. Sit down and develop yourself a more inclusive curriculum. Explain to yourself that you are right. The old anxiety-provoking curriculum was wrong. This is a new age and it's time to relax and enjoy the new order. And the purpose of past mistakes is to learn. And if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, it's time to get a move on and move on. Move on. Now if you regret things you may have said, thought or done to your own body, you can apologize openly, face to face or in writing and post it where your body can see it. You can expect that your body will accept that the two of you are a team again and now you can focus your undiverted attention and intention to release tension. Let go of what you've been holding on to for so long and clear the way for the most wonderful intentional healing of your body and your mind and your spirit that you have ever seen. Now it's a common belief that before we were born we made a deal to deal with the grief of losing what might have been because ownership is a man-made concept nobody owns anything we just think we do we think we have possessions we think we own stuff our clothes our houses our partners or kids our friends, even our bodies. We think we own our own bodies. And around the world, thousands of slave owners think they own their slaves. And the slaves believe that they are possessions of another person. And of course, this is wrong. They are prisoners who have accepted their positions. Ironically, now free of their possessions, but not their masters, who even themselves are only custodians of their own bodies and other possessions. And the deal that we made was that we would accept whatever the world dished up and make the best of it. And if it wasn't for that deal, you wouldn't be here today. Everything has a price. And if you want to borrow someone's car, possibly their most treasured possession, 
and take it for a fun run or an errand. It is common courtesy in many places to return it with as much fuel as when you took it, if not with a full tank. And if you borrow it for a while, washed, polished, and fully tuned and serviced, ready to hit the road as soon as you hand it over. Now you're old enough to look after yourself, right? Your mum could decide that we go to the park for a play today. But you may go out of your way to have a say where you play. That's fair enough, isn't it? That's exercising responsibility. And with responsibility comes rights. If you have the responsibility to take care of your body as if it was a precious gift on loan from a trusted friend who trusts in you to nurture his gift and return your loan body in the same perfect shape as when you take custody of it, you have the right to spin your wheels, take that body out and about and enjoy being in it and the responsibility to put fuel in the tank. If you had some special superpower where you could put your head on anyone else's body, what couldn't you do? Maybe you can see yourself as a wrestler or a boxer or a ballet dancer. Become a professional athlete and pay off a credit card. What if your brain can learn from your body through muscle memory? You could be a brain surgeon or an astronaut or a sumo wrestler or an opera singer or a surfer hoping if you run into a shark it's got an ED or without an inclination to put you on the menu And you can disagree with the shark about who is higher up the food chain or who looks better on a plate with salad. It's a toss-up. Maybe it's sharks because sharks eat other sharks quite regularly compared to humans. And you, being a human, as you listen to this, at least now, you can eat tossed salad or whatever you like. And unless you're between meals, a shark is a beautiful fish. And as you continue seeing yourself living in any body you like. I'd like to remind you that there's something very symbolic about letting go of, handing back your old body. Unlearn what you learnt and unlock your potential. And if you like it, and the feeling is mutual, allowing yourself to grow into your new body. And you may be curious how much energy will you need to grow into your new body 
and run and maintain your new high performance vehicle in a manner it expects to become accustomed to. You can dream and don't forget that dreams come true. You can dream of all the things you can do with this new machine if you feel it upright and dream standing up and don't lie to yourself ever about the veracity of opinions. When you choose the body that you have the honour and privilege of being the custodian of, that you will fall asleep in, and walk around in, and eat in, excrete from, urinate from, burp and fart from, store energy in, and hunt, cook, and recreate in, and create in. Now three questions for starters, to whet your appetite are, is your body really yours, or are you just the custodian of it? And are you entitled to feel grief because you didn't take advantage of the opportunity to take charge of your life at some point in your life when you didn't know any better? Like you do now. And the bad taste in your mouth that used to be grief can be replaced by the realisation of an unfortunate omission which will make its correction all the sweeter. And if you can embrace this body, it can be yours to use wisely. And if you can celebrate all the experiences you never had as a realisation of what can be, because you are alive with endless experiences in front of you, starting now. And you do not have time to remember all the experiences you never had, but so much time to create memories of all those wonderful experiences in front of you. To enjoy this and countless future moments. I wonder if you've ever noticed yourself wondering whether you're asleep or awake and notice that the only time you wonder whether you're awake is when you're asleep. Maybe you sometimes try to wake up, assuming you're asleep, and at first you can't. Maybe you float in the air around the bed, looking at your own custodial body. You could grow to love that body. It has the potential to do almost anything. Lying there, so comfortable, so relaxed. Who could know the amazing and enjoyable things that this incredible sentient being will achieve over its remaining lifespan? And it's what you do, not how you look doing it, that matters. And when someone gives you a gift, or soothes you, or helps you across the road, you can notice their firm grip. 
you can notice their warm, smooth skin. Perhaps you notice their kind eyes. And even if you are blind, you can love that body as you make a list of all the ways that you can give of yourself. And go out there and give joy and nurturing to your friends and family and everyone you meet. Now if you think that any particular custodial body is anything other than some degree of beautiful, perhaps you should be careful not to hurt anyone's feelings with this misperception. A worm's eye view projects a pin head on top of a cone with giant feet, and an aerial view shows a melon head on top of a celery stick with baby feet. And what starts as misperception can end as self-deception. Where that dream can seem so real and you are totally convinced you are awake, convinced that your distorted perspective is not an illusion. And in that dream, you can perceive yourself from several extra new directions, like walking around a fishbowl, admiring the beautiful colored fish. For some of them, only their movement gives them away as they blend into their world. For some of them, they almost disappear when they turn front on. Only their shimmering fins show where they are. And then they rotate smoothly to show off a beautiful design a delicious masterpiece of brilliant colour, shimmering in oil. It's incredible as you move to a different angle to get a better look. Or is that taste of a scene to drink in and absorb? And you may be curious whether a beautiful fish needs to make a list of all the ways it can show a different side of itself. And I wonder if other forms of life can, as you close your eyes and listen to this, feel Feel some kind of non-judgmental self-awareness or maybe even a non-judgmental appreciation of their own beauty. I mean a plant just doesn't have the right to criticize its own body shape or its own unique perfect design, does it? And you know as you take a deep breath and think about it, a plant is a wonderful thing and it's so nice, so pleasing just to be able to think about a plant as if it were comfortable in its own skin. Would a tomato plant or a carrot plant or a beetroot plant, or a celery plant, or a ginger plant have nice feelings, a sense of comfort and self-belief in the beauty of its own body shape. 
an expectation of good health. And every day, just go into a deep state of belief that everything will be okay. And breathe more slowly as their tiny little seedlings begin to form. So tiny, yet so full of promise as they grow into their own unique yet perfect shape to give you the desire to eat a luscious tomato sun ripened or a delicious carrot orange and sweet or a tasty stick of celery crisp and crunchy or a tangy slice of green ginger leaving such a pleasant taste in your mouth or freshly squeezed orange juice tingling your taste buds and it's so nice to have healthy food in your stomach that wonderful feeling a child a thirsty child has and can want to drink and you can wonder whether that's the way all these wonderful healthy plants feel when the rain falls and washes everything so that your skin looks so smooth and soft and all feels well and you can feel the energy stored beneath your skin or the surface of your leaves floating in the breeze natural energy that looks so beautiful a gorgeous full shape bursting with energy that takes your breath away a vitality and energy in every cell that cannot be criticized and you can accept that this is how it's meant to be every imperfection is perfect and you can allow your imagination your sense of creativity to take over like when you have a dream that doesn't make sense yet somehow you know it's telling you something maybe something very useful like as a plant how you hold your watering can the best way for maximum elimination of spillage or your spoon and compared to before the process of eating will become for you a pleasure the like of which you have never experienced before and your food will taste so much better and fulfill you so much more than before and after swaying back and forth and flexing your muscles against the breeze to grow stronger it will seem the natural and satisfying thing to do to accept a natural supply of energy from the soil and the air and the rain and exercise in the breeze and sometimes just relax and burn up natural body energy stored in your leaves for healing or just living so that all energy is useful
Now I'd like to invite you to come with me on a journey that happened a long time ago when you first started to make important decisions before you had a sense of self-image. Decisions like Will I copy my mum and open up my mouth and let my tongue be a landing pad for a jet stacked with mushy warm stuff? And as you watch that healthy food go into the entrance of your face, you have no idea it helps you grow into a fit, healthy body. In fact, you have no idea you even have a body. And the idea that you have a very healthy self-image will come a little later. Your mother will never see it any different. So when the time comes, why should you? And isn't it wonderful how a helpless little baby, totally dependent on his or her mother for nourishment and support, can look into his mother's eyes and see non-judgmental love. And your mother teaches you, slowly and without fail, things like how to think for yourself and how to think of yourself and to enjoy doing the things that make you healthy and strong and allow your body to find a natural healthy balance between your size and shape and your strength and energy levels and rest and repair. Heal yourself. And as you continue to do that, you can probably notice your breathing slowing down, heart rate slowing, blood pressure easing, as you allow random thoughts to float in and out of your mind, maybe in between having an internal conversation or within an internal conversation. And sometimes you can notice a tendency to ruminate on certain thoughts. And that if you stare at something long enough, what should look right looks wrong. And then that becomes the new truth like playing with your toy truck all day and wishing it was a cool sports car. Does your car have a self-image problem? Like some cars think that if they carry less fuel they'll be lighter they don't realize that fuel isn't a part of you. It's just something you carry to spend later. Now that reminds me of a man who had a car that was very self-conscious about its own weight. So he stopped putting water in the radiator because each litre of water weighs a kilogram. But after that, the car started to overheat and get tired and didn't want to get out of his garage. 
and when he occasionally did, the car hardly burnt up what little fuel the man put in the tank. Now some people like to keep their cars running on empty, where the inconvenience and cost of running out of fuel possibly outweighs the cost of even more fuel needed to carry the weight of the extra fuel, or the frugality of running on the last drop is outmatched by the spark and explosion of burning up that extra energy. And there are some people who constantly check out their car's body shape. They can't take their eyes off their own body. They're obsessed by it, staring at themselves, eyeing off their own tail end in their own rear vision mirrors and checking out under their own hood instead of watching the traffic. They don't even realize they're doing it, let alone that there are better things to think about. Then there are some cars that think that carrying a load of groceries in the boot makes you fat. It doesn't. And that's a fact. And if that grossly incorrect association of carrying weight with carrying weight is to be believed, and you can suspend disbelief for the moment, you close your eyes, wait a little longer, and it becomes clear. The extra weight in the tank is virtually imperceptible. But the extra available energy is actually very noticeable. And the reliability of having at least sufficient energy to get to where you wouldn't mind going is appreciable. And you realize that you can now change your whole belief system to the merits of not running on empty and to the merits of a petrol tank that is fueled up and ready for action. And your car can check out its own reflection without needing any more than a brief admiring look and then drive on with energy and confidence. And you can stare obsessively at pictures of your perfect car in your glossy magazines. And in the past, it would have only made it worse when you get in your real car. Everyone can see how fat it seems, how fat you look in it, until you realize they've been sucked in by the advertising gurus, just like you. There are no fat cars. Just different body types. And it's not so much about how many good looks you think you've got. It's more about how much energy you've got to get up and go that really counts. And if you think about it, your natural car body shape and its abundant energy supply when you fuel it upright is perfect for you, deserving of your respect, your non-judgment.
And that reminds me of a man who went overseas on holiday and noticed that everyone had strange accents. And then, just as strangely, when he came home, he noticed that everyone was talking with overly exaggerated local accents. Whereas he could recall quite clearly that they were all speaking with no accent at all before he left. So he went to speech therapy to make sure he didn't sound like everyone else. Only that didn't help because it made them sound even worse. So he increased the frequency of his lessons and that didn't help either. And after a while he was starting to sound like a self-centered toff with an affected upper-class tone, very prim and proper. And of course, to himself, he sounded normal. And everyone else sounded weird, until he heard a recording of his own voice, and it sounded different. He couldn't see it, but it sounded a bit small and surprisingly similar to everyone else. So he quit his speech therapy and took up singing. Where well, you can't see your size when you sing and where different people sing with different accents. But no one seems to mind Now you may be surprised to hear a story about how a teenager was cured of terrible insomnia. He was told to go away on a camping holiday for four weeks and go somewhere where there are no mirrors and a very interesting thing happened to that boy. His insomnia was cured and so was his terrible acne which reminds me of an old proverb the best way to help someone is never tell them what they don't want to hear Once upon a time, there was an ugly duckling who's actually very cute with a young and impressionable mind. One day, a jealous big sister tells her she's fat and ugly. The ugly duckling looks at her reflection in the water and she can see it's true. And the more she looks, the fatter and uglier she looks. So the little duckling becomes very sad and loses her appetite. She runs away from home and soon becomes very thin and weak. Then a farmer finds her and takes her home. He and his children care for her and soon she grows big and healthy. Then one day the duckling sees some swans flying overhead and they glide onto her pond. We're swans like you, they say warmly. Where have you been hiding? And some children nearby say, Look at that young swan. She's the finest of them all. 
and she's filled with happiness. I wonder if you've ever noticed the distorted view you get when you look along two parallel lines, like railway lines. They seem to join, way in the distance, out of sight. Whereas you know they don't actually join. Yet they look like they do. And when you step a small distance away to the side of the tracks and look at the parallel lines from a square angle, they look parallel. At least the very small section of track closest to you does. But out of the corner of each eye, you can see that into the distance they slowly get closer together. Even though you know they don't. And if you step back onto the tracks, you can notice that they look further apart than they looked when you were standing beside them. And your perspective is distorted. No matter where you stand. And it's interesting how quickly the brain reinterprets what it sees as something representing what it believes to be true. And those images of converging lines begin to really look parallel. And what doesn't look parallel, looks parallel. Because you believe it is. And you can accept that. Because you know it's true. The train wheels are a fixed distance apart and they ride comfortably on all sections of the track. So the tracks do their job perfectly and the train can just enjoy the ride to its destination and be content in the knowledge that the size and spacing of the tracks have been designed perfectly, beautifully Now, of course, most people would like to think that they are very attractive. But from whose perspective? Attractiveness is in the eye of the beholder, right? For example, if I find myself attractive, you might be curious, does that mean then that I really am attractive? Now, of course, of that, in my own mind, there can be no doubt. But even if I get it wrong, I'm still right. Because attractiveness is a subjective value judgment. And because, when it comes to what I find attractive, in my opinion, my own opinion is the one I listen to, not others unless they agree with me. So if you could successfully delude yourself that you are the most attractive human being on the planet, or suffer from the illusion that the opposite is true, in each case, what exactly would you be looking at or becoming focused and absorbed in? Objectifying. Subjectifying. Or noticing what others don't seem to. And you might be curious 
what sort of things you would not be noticing. Now that reminds me of a man who found someone attractive. But that someone found themselves unattractive. So the man spent every spare moment, every opportunity to explain to this other person, slowly, detail by detail, why they are attractive in his eyes. And step by step, this other person grew to appreciate that your own persona and embodiment can be seen by others as attractive. Because if you, like most people, would like to think that you are attractive, and people are insisting to you that you are, who are you to argue? Why not join their reality? Now with your permission, I'd like to offer you a new middle name. It's quite legal. People do it all the time. And if you're embarrassed about it, you can keep it a secret that your new middle name is Gorgeous. You are Gorgeous. That's your name. It describes you. Now the next step is to get people to start calling you by your new name. Maybe start with your best friend. You can pretend they've got the same new middle name as you when you greet them with Hi Gorgeous. Or leave them feeling good with See you Gorgeous. Practice in front of the mirror. Once you get good at it, you can do it with everyone. And it won't be long before they realize that everyone is gorgeous. In fact, you're the one who's particularly gorgeous. And they'll start calling you by your new name. Like they did when you used to sit and play on the floor. And you can play with something interesting at the end of your foot and realize it's yours. A joyful discovery of what you later learn to be a big toe on your own body. A vehicle that will steer you through a most wonderful life. And a small baby does not have the right to call his own big toe fat. That wouldn't be allowed, even as a joke. And that beautiful little baby is taught very well, all about self-image, and believing that what you were given by those who came before is beautiful and precious. And make an important decision to look long enough into the mirror to affirm your own image and no longer. And think positively and behave naturally at all times. Play with your toy car. Enjoy life like you were raised to. And all you have to do is relax. Listen to the sounds of birds tweeting, creating a receptiveness to positive change, to an improved self-image, 
to the possibility of self-acceptance, to the removal of chronic negative self-judgment. When you truly believe in yourself, when you think about all the good things in your life, count your blessings whenever you can, every day. Dysfunctional thinking can be undone, replaced with what you decide you want to think about, replaced with attitudes and images you prefer to have. And as you listen to the birds, anything is possible. And when you find your true body, it can purify itself and digest the remnants of old scar tissue. It can extract the goodness and use it and excrete what is useless from your body to be left behind and forgotten. And now, unwanted thoughts and feelings that you used to have are your history and our history. And very soon the future will be now. And perhaps you can be conscious of the unbelievable view or the sounds of nature and forget what you don't want to remember. And if someone speaks to you, tells you that the wonderful thing, my beautiful friend, is that you are in charge now. You can look at it from that point of view. You are in charge now. And over time, as you focus on everything that is beautiful, there will be no limit of things to look at and love. And if you look in the mirror, you can see a flower opening. And perhaps you can have an appetite for life. Partake of the gorgeous views. Gorge yourself on them. And drink in the sights. And perhaps you can eat your words. And swallow your pride. Take your time and digest these suggestions and not throw up any negative comments as you find somewhere safe and warm where you can relax and just be the persona and embodiment you are meant to be.